Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky spoke about the country's anti-missile and air defense systems in a daily video address from Kiev on Wednesday. We are now working to further increase supplies from our partners, both missiles and defense systems, as well as everything we need to strengthen our mobile fire groups, Zelensky said. He also said German Chancellor Olaf Scholz had been assisting Ukraine, specifically with air defense systems. Zelensky made those comments after Russia attacked the Ukrainian capital Kiev with a sophisticated combination of missiles and drones for the first time in 73 days on Wednesday. That came a day after the Pentagon said most of the North Korean troops sent to help Moscow's war effort are fighting to drive Ukraine's army off Russian soil in the Kursk border region. Ukraine is also straining to hold back a months-long Russian onslaught in the eastern Donetsk region. Ukraine is grateful to all our partners who are helping us with the rockets and the system of the sky. We are working on this to increase the amount of partners from the and the rockets and the rockets and the complex of the sky. And all that is necessary to support our mobile and groups. Стратегічна мета – досягти такого практичного рівня співпраці з партнерами, щоб ми тут, в Україні, могли виробляти необхідні для нас системи протиповітряної оборони і протиракети. Говорив сьогодні з канцлером Німеччини Оловом Шольцем, Німеччина – лідер в підтримці саме ППО, і ми обговорили зараз постачання ще однієї системи «Аріст і роботу в подальшому над розвитком повітряного щита. Також обговорили формат Рамштайну, співпраця, яка принесла багато користі Україні та всім партнерам. Це наша спільна сила. І також обговорили підготовку зустрічі групи 20 в Бразилії вже наступного тижня. Домовляємось з партнерами, щоб позиція України була представлена у всіх відповідних дискусій. Тільки разом світ здатен гарантувати справді надійний мир і тривалий спокій для міжнародних відносин. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky met Tuesday with newly appointed ambassadors to Kyiv from Greece, Albania, Japan, and Egypt. The ambassadors officially handed over their credentials to Zelensky and then held separate talks with him. The appointments come one day before the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is expected to hold urgent meetings on Ukraine with NATO and European Union officials following last week's presidential election and the return of Donald Trump to the White House in January. The State Department will hold talks in Brussels on Wednesday on how to boost support for Ukraine as President-elect Trump has suggested U.S. military assistance to the country fighting off Russia's invasion could be severely curtailed after he takes office. Ambassador, my congratulations. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, our congratulations for the your mm. beginning of his ready, and we are waiting for um, the pleasure for us. Japan has a very important role mm -hmm. in this case. Please. And we can 
the Canadian Deputy during March, thanks to uh, to the government and do the signing of this document as close as possible. We The United States is committed to making sure that every dollar we have at our disposal will be sent to Ukraine by January 20th, Secretary of State Antony Blinken told journalists on Wednesday during a visit to the NATO headquarters in Brussels. Concerns about the U.S.'s ongoing commitment to supporting Ukraine, and to NATO more broadly, have been swirling since Donald Trump won the presidential election last week. Trump, with varying degrees of consistency, has been critical of NATO and support for Ukraine and Taiwan, two democracies under threat that depend on U.S. military support to counter Russia and China. He has shown little interest in the long-standing U.S. role as anchor of strategic alliances with European and Indo-Pacific democracies. Before the election, partners and adversaries already were re-evaluating their security arrangements in preparation for Trump's possible return. Blinken also insisted that now was the time for Israel to end its war in Gaza and called for more extensive humanitarian pauses in the fighting there. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, first, it's a pleasure, uh, as always, to be back uh, at NATO. Uh, we had very good discussions with Secretary General Mark Rutte. Delighted to see him at the helm of the alliance uh, in this critical moment. Uh, as well as with uh, all of our NATO colleagues at the uh, North Atlantic Council. Uh, the purpose of this visit is to focus our efforts on ensuring that Ukraine has the money, the munitions, and the mobilized forces to fight effectively in 2025 or to be able to negotiate a peace from a position of strength. Uh, we've obligated just uh, recently and pushed out the door another $8 billion in security assistance for Ukraine. That was in September. Another almost uh, half a billion dollars uh, just a few weeks ago. And President Biden is committed to making sure that every dollar we have at our disposal will be pushed out the door between now and January 20th. Uh, on the Middle East and on Gaza. Um, let me be very clear about both the intent and the effect of uh, the letter that Secretary Austin and I sent uh, a month ago to our Israeli counterparts. The intent was to inject a sense of urgency with Israel to take necessary steps to address the dire humanitarian situation of children, women, and men uh, in Gaza. The effect has been that of the 15 steps that we urged action on, Israel has taken action, either in implementing or in the, being in the process of implementing 12 of the 15 steps. There are three uh, big issues that need, still need to be addressed that come from the, the letter. Uh, short of ending the war, which we believe now is the time to move to that, um, we have to see these humanitarian steps fully implemented, sustained, and as I said, particularly with regard to pauses, having more extensive pauses. One final thing on this. Um, Israel has to meet these responsibilities, um, and we will be tracking this every single day. 